Hello everyone, my name is Javier Serra. I am from the Music Technology Group of the Universidad Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona. And I will be presenting uh, uh, this paper uh, named uh, Performance Assessment Technologies for the Support of Musical Instrument Learning, a uh, paper that uh, I wrote uh, together with Cebola uh, Terimenko, Alia Morsi and uh, Giotina Dang, also members of my team uh, of the Music Technology Group. The, the presentation will follow more or less the, the structure of, uh, of the paper uh, in which uh, we start with the introduction, we go to um, assessment practices to describe uh, what practices of assessment uh, are done in uh, music education. Then uh, we, we have some state of the art of the assessment technologies. Uh, the, the core part of the paper is a case study in which we uh, assess uh, guitar exercises within a, a MOOC uh, context. Uh, then we have some open challenges, uh, so issues that still should be worked on in order to advance in this field. And finally, uh, we have some, some concluding remarks. Um, so let's start with the introduction. First, uh, we have to say that at the MTG, uh, we have been doing quite a bit of research related to this uh, topic. Uh, we have been working a lot on audio signal processing uh, techniques, uh, therefore, on techniques to analyze audio signals uh, with uh, the, a musical perspective to try to extract musically relevant features uh, from audio recordings. And the Sentia library is uh, an important uh, uh, software uh, library that basically encapsulates a lot of the algorithms that we have been developing over the years and that capture the state of the art in this field. Um, also, we have been working uh, quite a bit on uh, music education for the last few years and developing tools that can help on that. Uh, in particular, uh, we work with uh, with Core to develop an application called Cortosia that I will mention later. Uh, we develop uh, an app called Rias uh, for uh, assessment and for um, helping uh, to learn uh, singing, especially in the context of Indian music. And also, we have developed this uh, educational framework called Music Critic that uh, I will also refer later. And, and to understand a little bit the, the context of this paper, we have to understand the context of the technologies uh, to support instrument learning. And there has been uh, quite a bit of work on developing software applications, both mobile and desktop, to support uh, someone practicing an instrument. And there are quite a few successful examples of that. Uh, and then quite a few of them um, include assessment technologies. So therefore, uh, technologies that can analyze what uh, the student performs and giving them some feedback. And this is uh, the main context of our work. So the context of assessment technologies within, let's say, tools to support instrument learning. Um, now let, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the practice of assessment in music education. Um, we are not uh, experts in music education, so we first had to understand a little bit the, the overall uh, uh, topic of assessment practices and understand what people have been doing. Um, and it's clearly, it's a, it's a complex and wide topic. Uh, there are two major categories of assessment, uh, the one of assessment of learning, so therefore assessing what has been learned, and uh, the other is assessment for learning, so therefore assessing uh, in, in the process of learning, in, in, in the goal of giving feedback. So assessment of learning is mainly related to grading or, or, or uh, placement or selection of policy issues. And assessment for learning is clearly related to instructional aspect, diagnostic or guidance, uh, taking decisions at those levels. So it's clearly that we first have to understand the purpose uh, of, of the assessment. And only out of that, then we can develop a specific framework and strategy. So the, the, the specification of uh, these type of assessments are normally uh, encapsulated in what are called measurement tools. Um, but uh, measurement tools in the, in the sense of uh, educational specification, not so much uh, at the level of technology. So a measurement tool uh, from an educational perspective uh, uh, includes uh, dimensions, so the, the aspects that we want to evaluate, like the interpretation, the rhythm, technique, intonation. And then we have to define the criteria 
that we want to evaluate those dimensions with. So for example, for rhythm, uh, we uh, can measure how close uh, someone is to the metronome. Once we have that, <clears throat> then we have to define the type of feedback. Uh, so from a very granular type of, of feedback of be, being able to say yes or no, and that would be like of a checklist, to a more uh, kind of a scale of uh, assessment, um, uh, so to measure the degree of uh, proficiency of, of a particular skill, and that's typically a rating scale, or we can have a more verbose and descriptive type of feedback in the, in the, uh, and uh, we can call the performance level descriptions, and that would be what we normally call rubrics. So this would be from uh, less uh, detailed to uh, more detailed type of feedback. And there has been uh, quite a number of uh, proposals of, uh, specific, um, of specific measurement tools, and these are some of them proposed by experts. So the, our goal is how to take this knowledge, uh, this way of thinking and describing the assessment, into a technological framework. So now let's talk about technologies that uh, have been already uh, developed and that can be used in this particular context. So uh, I want to start with a, a, a proposed framework in, uh, in which we have tried to, um, to represent all the elements, technological elements that need to be uh, basically developed in order to do a complete assessment uh, process. So in this diagram, uh, we represent on the top the dotted uh, uh, line the, the development of an assessment model, which requires to start from recordings of students, from the scores that the students have to play, and from the, the, the assessment um, uh, that a, a teacher uh, has done, so that we can learn from that. And from this data, from this uh, data set, then we can do some feature extraction to analyze the, the, the recordings of the students. And we can do some machine learning, what is here called performance level learning, that tries to match the student with the grades or the, the feedback that a teacher has done. So that basically we develop as output of that, a model that encapsulates this knowledge of assessment that a particular teacher or a group of teachers uh, do uh, with respect to performances of uh, students. And this would be of course constrained to some a specific type of exercises. Once we have this criterion model, then um, uh, we can actually perform an actual automatic assessment from a recording. So a student records something, uh, submits it to a system, and there is where the feature extraction and, and the machine learning happens again in order to assess a particular performance and give some feedback uh, to the student at the level of some visualization or some uh, particular mark or grade uh, of the, the level that this student has. Okay, so then um, on this uh, model, we can include uh, the state of the art of the different uh, techniques that have been proposed to study uh, these common dimensions, musical dimensions that are uh, um, have to be uh, studied. No? So we need to study rhythmic aspects of a performance, uh, pitch-related aspects, and technique and expressivity. Um, and for each of them, uh, there has been quite a number of uh, techniques, many of them coming from the field of uh, music information retrieval, that, for example, in the, uh, at the level of rhythm, uh, study onsets, beat or tempo, and then we use different uh, signal level characteristics uh, to study them, uh, like energy, spectral flux, or uh, some probabilistic models related with dynamic variation networks. Um, pitch, the same thing. Here we are interested in, in the tuning, the intonation, note accuracy, and there has been a number of techniques uh, based on 
finding the fundamental frequency like begin or melodia or the the chromograms is a is a kind of a type of techniques also that allow us to study the pitch and even understand the the chord that is being played and the accuracy of a, of a chord technique and expressivity of course is a much more complex uh, a dimension that uh, is very subjective, uh, that relates to the control that an, a student has on an instrument and the musicality, and that requires uh, machine learning techniques that can actually learn this subjectivity, that can learn uh, how, what a, a teacher or an expert would consider to be a good technique or a good musicality. And, but of course, the state of the art, uh, there has been quite a bit of work done, but we are still quite far for finding solutions that can really assess uh, in a musical uh, way like uh, a teacher uh, does. But uh, anyway, good progress uh, has been done. And then to finish this part, um, also we, we, we should talk about specific applications uh, that have been developed uh, to, to take some of these technologies and uh, make them into a, a practical kind of, uh, of tool. Uh, for example, uh, Smart Music is, a, is, a, is a, an app uh, in Osmo, it's a desktop uh, application that is, uh, is used to, to uh, help a student uh, practice and uh, with the pitch and rhythm uh, analysis, they can actually display uh, how well you're playing a score. That's the same situation like uh, with an application like Musician. Uh, which is uh, very successful and many people use it and it's more maybe has this edutainment type of application that engages the user so there's a lot of functionality to to promote uh, user engagement. Uh, at the NTG as I mentioned at the beginning we have been working on, on a number of, uh, of tools and apps like RIAS uh, for Indian music that uh, we uh, we created and now uh, Music Muni uh, which is a spin-off company is uh, developing and maintaining it and improving it. Um, also we collaborated with Core to develop this app called Cortosia, which uh, which basically measures the, the sound quality of a performance, so going beyond this more uh, rhythm and pitch related information and talking about uh, the sound quality. Okay, um, so now let's go to, to our uh, case study. Uh, so what uh, we actually uh, did in order to uh, basically bring all this knowledge and technologies into a particular use case. And, and we started by having a very clear uh, use case, which was this uh, a guitar course uh, within, uh, within a, a MOOC platform, Cadence, and this is a guitar course of Berkeley that uh, has some guitar exercises. And therefore, we wanted to, to use this as a test case to evaluate what we have. And even though we, we aim to develop technologies that are broader than this particular use case, this was a, a good way to try to uh, test and evaluate uh, uh, our work in a, in a real practical uh, situation. So the first thing is that uh, in, the, in this course, uh, there are some exercises, there are some picking exercises, and there are some strumming, strumming exercises. So in, in the video of the course- I have my metronome set to 60 beats a minute. So this is the, the exercises One, as they explained two, by the teacher. Three, four. This would be the picking. And then there are the cores. Okay. And then uh, a typical student uh, would perform like uh, the chords and would record something like this. already can understand the, the issues that uh, might be challenging to measure that. Okay, so this was uh, our context. We wanted to basically evaluate these student performances. Uh, and we did it in, uh, in the using uh, Music Critic uh, that I mentioned before, which is it's a framework that uh, we have been developing uh, 
for um, for a few years, uh, in which uh, this uh, type of assessment uh, can be uh, actually put in a in a real situation. So um, Music Critic has a um, it's like a server kind of technology with a, with a web API that uh, connects with a, a client uh, an online course, and therefore we can actually um, um, have all the the complete workflow of uh, teacher and student interaction. So in this diagram, we see like the teacher on the top um, creates an exercise. And so this exercise uh, with uh, this interface uh, is uh, then stored in the, in the server. So it has the content of the exercise, and then uh, it has the measurement uh, tools that are needed to evaluate uh, this exercise and some others. So this is when uh, then it, it's configured. So uh, so there is this measurement tool is configured for that particular exercise that the, the teacher specifies. And then once this is defined, um, then the student can submit these uh, these exercises, the recording of these exercises through their interface in the in the course, and then the exercise is analyzed with this measurement tool uh, and all these uh, uh, technologies that are in the music uh, critic server, and this then the output is sent back to uh, the student uh, uh, with an interface to see that. So in fact, the student, uh, the, the, the interface of the student is the recording um, interface. So this would be like the recording interface for the core exercises and then the feedback interface. So this is the interface that uh, he gets uh, with the results. So where he sees the, the deviations from the, the ideal performance that he had to do and the, the level analysis of these different dimensions. So let's go now into how we did that, how we actually uh, develop the technology to have this feedback from a particular user recording. So we started by uh, studying the course, studying what the, the teachers uh, were uh, aiming to, to obtain from the exercises. And out of that, we defined uh, these uh, different dimensions and the criteria with which we would uh, evaluate these dimensions. And so here in this table, we see that the different dimensions and the different criteria to evaluate them. But of course, uh, we had to narrow it down to make uh, a practical uh, thing that we could do uh, for uh, in, a, in, a, in a few months. So we, we decided to focus on rhythm and focus on the idea of closeness to the metronome. And then uh, we uh, also worked on pitch and intonation. So trying to measure uh, notes, accuracy, and tuning of the actual guitar. Um, and, and being able to measure that. The others we, we have been working on, but in the case of this uh, case study, we uh, didn't actually um, deploy them. And then we develop a rating scale uh, to, to uh, get uh, feedback uh, to the students in which uh, we consider four levels on each criteria um, so four levels to, to get uh, these, uh, these uh, measurement. Okay, so in order to do that, then we have to collect data, as I mentioned before. So data collection is a fundamental element in this type of, uh, of technologies. So we, we created a, a data set of uh, 233 recordings of students of uh, different levels, uh, using different guitars, uh, different recording conditions that uh, uh, were playing the exercises that uh, were in the, in the course, uh, in particular six exercises. Then uh, we had teachers uh, involved in assessing uh, manually those. Uh, so they actually, uh, with these uh, rating scales that we define, we ask them to rate them. And also we, we ask them to rate the results that the system would obtain. So this would be a way to get uh, what we would call the ground truth, the, the data that then the machine learning should learn from. 
Okay, and now let's go to the assessment of the different dimensions that we uh, decided to focus on. The first dimension was uh, rhythm, and therefore we had to uh, come up with a model that would measure whether someone is playing uh, exactly on the metronome or not. And here we see a, a little bit a representation of the model we developed. So here we see an histogram of uh, deviations, onset deviations with respect to the ideal positions. So like the green uh, shape um, are basically performances that are good. Uh, so um, so the, the uh, students that played very well and the uh, teachers agreed that they played very well, the distribution of onset deviations was the one that is captured by this green um, uh, sort of shape histogram. And the others, like the red would be uh, the, the worst one, so the deviations for students that would consider to play badly had this type of deviation. And then out of these, this is basically the model that then we can use to evaluate a student and, uh, and give them feedback whether they do good or bad at this uh, at the rhythm level. Then uh, another dimension that we uh, want to assess is uh, pitch. So how uh, well someone is uh, playing in terms of the notes and the chords. So here are uh, distributions of a uh, chroma derived feature. So we, we, we use uh, the, the idea of uh, chromogram to evaluate uh, the pitch accuracy. And we wanted to measure the pitch accuracy both on single notes and on chords. Well, the, we don't have time to go into the details, but again, here we see the on the left one, the pitch accuracy of someone playing very good, which is the, the, the green one, and the red one would be not so good. And these uh, triangles express the um, accuracy related to chord play. So you see that uh, the rightmost uh, triangle shows the distribution of uh, someone playing uh, major chords very well. Uh, so it's all uh, very much um, uh, condensed and, uh, and uh, there is a, uh, uh, just a very um, representation that is quite compact. And then someone playing not very well, we see this uh, distribution all around this triangle. And again, this is the model that then we would use to evaluate uh, a new performance and, uh, and be able to give uh, a feedback on how well they are playing and uh, these uh, uh, rating uh, scales. And finally, the uh, last uh, assessment we did was on tuning. On, uh, on how in the case of the guitar is basically how well the guitar is actually tuned. Here we couldn't use uh, chromograms because it has a kind of semitone resolution. So we, we develop uh, uh, an approach based on measuring the spectral peaks and, um, of, the, of an spectrum and, uh, and comparing that with a equal tempered type of distribution. So in here we see um, uh, a good tuned guitar on the left. So it again is quite picky and is uh, centered uh, around zero and a guitar that is uh, not well tuned that has a much uh, uh, sort of wide uh, um, distribution. And again, using these, then we can measure uh, different uh, types of uh, tunings and, uh, and whether uh, someone has tuned the guitar well or not. A fundamental element in any of these type of research is the, the evaluation. Uh, how can we evaluate if the system does well or not? And that's very difficult. Um, so here, uh, what we are showing is an evaluation that uh, we try to compare the human evaluation, what the teachers did with the automatic evaluation. So here you see basically the correlation between pairs of uh, either automatic and human or two humans. So we can see like comparing uh, automatic evaluation with human one, automatic evaluation with human two, uh, automatic with human average, and then comparing to humans. And what is relevant from this, uh, uh, this evaluation is to, to see that the, 
the human to human uh, um, sort of concordance uh, and the difference between two humans, and you see in the rhythm is 1.33, in pitch is 1.16, and tuning is 1.16, is higher than between an automatic evaluation and a human. So basically, with this evaluation, what we are trying to, to see if the automatic evaluation is in the range of the evaluations that humans would do. And kind of we prove that that's the case, that uh, automatic evaluation is very much within, in fact, it's, 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 the deviation is even smaller than uh, the deviation that happens between humans. Of course, we have to realize that uh, a proper evaluation should, uh, should be uh, quite different in the sense that what we would like ideally to evaluate is uh, the evaluation of whether someone is actually learning, not uh, whether the, the system is uh, accurate or not. Um, so that's something that uh, should be done. So there is a, a need to, to basically evaluate the, the subjectively how a student is actually developing the learning uh, capabilities and being able to, to, the, to measure the, the skills that are being developed. And again, of course, our evaluation is very much uh, within the context of the course uh, that uh, we have been working and, uh, and uh, to, to, we would like also to evaluate this in a much broader and see how these technologies can be evaluated in different uh, use cases. But anyway, this at least shows that uh, something is useful, relevant. And let me just then uh, go towards the finish by um, mentioning some open challenges uh, that uh, we believe are very important to work on. Uh, the first one is uh, clearly that uh, in order to develop any of these uh, technologies, we really need to understand what musical learning means. That's something that uh, should be done by uh, collaborations with uh, with uh, psychologists, with music educators, and, and really requires uh, 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 to consider many other things. So for example, it's clear that uh, cultural diversity plays an important role that uh, requires uh, uh, different types of learning for different musical styles and for different people from different cultures. And uh, there is clear that we need to uh, uh, not just use the audio, but uh, we need to, to be able to uh, analyze uh, the gesture of the musicians. We need to even analyze uh, the, the uh, neurophysiological information. So there has been some attempts at also using this type of information uh, beyond the audio signals. And also these um, machine learning, these uh, techniques that we are talking about, uh, they need to, to be what is called interpretable. We need to, to develop techniques that are not just black boxes that uh, tell us yes or no or, uh, or good or bad. We need to develop techniques that, uh, that learn and, uh, and that can explain what they learn. And that's a big challenges within the AI, and that's something that we are working on. And 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 finally, another of course open challenge is that uh, music learning is is a is a is a complete uh, kind of uh, goal that uh, captures many aspects of the of the student teacher interaction, not just a single algorithm that analyzes the audio. So we need to develop systems and understand and uh, and evaluate uh, systems that accompany a student in their learning process and that we can actually evaluate uh, uh, the, the learning is in, this, in a complete uh, global sense. So to conclude, uh, let me just uh, point out just uh, a few um, things. The first is that, well, we presented uh, uh, a context for music learning and we proposed some concrete solutions for, of course, a use case that uh, was uh, small, but I think uh, relevant to, to, to show the potential of all these approaches. Um, we need to extend uh, to other instruments and educational contexts if we want uh, these uh, to be actually useful. Um, 
And uh, as I mentioned before, the multidisciplinarity is, uh, is an element that needs to be brought in in order to develop uh, these type of systems. We need the uh, involvement of uh, psychologists, uh, educators, uh, of course, uh, technologies, uh, uh, in order to, to advance together in uh, understanding and developing uh, useful tools. Uh, and that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I hope you learned something from, from it. Uh, thanks for listening. And if you have any question, uh, well, feel free to contact us, uh, any of the authors of the paper. Well, I am Javier Serra, the, the last author, but uh, you can feel free to contact any of us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.